Tekken has been going strong for over two decades now, which is both brilliant and frightening. How do we get beyond this fear and back into the world of professionalism and interesting video making? We turn to Wikipedia for help, obviously. Tekken is a fighting video game franchise created, developed and published by Namco, later Bandai Namco Entertainment. Flawless. As my encyclopedic knowledge of all games will now inform you, there have been nine main Tekken games, with the most recent being Tekken 7. This makes little sense, but then neither does our continuing existence in this horrible world, so it's horses for roundabouts there. What it does mean is that I can jump back through the hoops of… time? to talk us all through the history of one of gaming's great fighting series. All through the lens of a pro wrestler dressed in a jaguar mask who at one point was an alcoholic and had an affinity for orphan children. Not in that way… 1994, Tekken, Arcade and PlayStation. One of the first in the then new wave of 3D fighting games beaten to the punch ha 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 by Virtua Fighter at the very least, Tekken, originally known as Rave War, still raised the bar, in an extra dimension no less. Eight starting characters and ten unlockable chaps, chapettes, robo chaps and bears meant there was a lot of variety, even if some of the pugilists were just palette swaps. And who doesn't want to fight as a bear? Someone whose family was killed by a bear, that's who. Anyway, the original Tekken lay the foundations for what still stands today. Straightforward brawls without projectiles, most of the time, where one button corresponds to one limb. Lots of grappling and juggling, and lots of running and flying drop kicking people in the neck. It was a revelation in the arcade, and, well, also a revelation at home when the not quite but nearly arcade perfect PlayStation version hit, setting the wheels in motion for what would become a storied Sony Bamco Nandai relationship. King Fact. King is one of only six characters to have appeared in every main Tekken game. The others are Heihachi, Yoshimitsu, Paul, Nina and, of course, everyone's favourite fighting pet bear, Kuma. 1995, Tekken 2, Arcade and PlayStation. Oh, and a hacked NES version. Tekken 2 was originally entitled The Continuing Adventure of Fisty Kick and the Quest for a Rumpus, but that title was dropped for being too politically charged. We all know how well gamers react to politics in their games after all. What it did end up being was a sequel to Tekken 1, which is what the original game wasn't retroactively retitled. Adding eight new characters, bringing the roster to 25, and now including a boxing kangaroo and dinosaur, Rave War 2 also dialed up the technical brawling aspects, making it a game I no longer had any interest in learning the intricacies of. That's a lie. Obviously I got good as King, and T2 Judgment Fist introduced reversals, meaning you could grab someone's fist as they threw it at you and break their arm, if timed correctly. Sidestepping, chain throws, which you may see some of in this footage. You will see some. You'll see one sequence repeatedly, that that's what I mean. Tekken 2 was and is phenomenally good fun, but would it ever be beaten in quality? Yes it would, because Tekken 3 came out. Cliffhanger! Wait, I think I've missed the stuff. King Fact. Tekken 2 was the first in the series to feature King's signature 5 throw combo, one of the few intricate combination moves in a fighting game I've ever bothered to learn. 1997. Tekken 3, Arcade and, uh, PlayStation. When you talk about the original PlayStation's truly great games, there are common names appearing in everyone's lists. Your Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2s, your Metal Gear Solids, your Resident Evil 2s, your Apocalypse starring Bruce Willis's, your Johnny Bazooka tones, and then there's Tekken 3. You may balk at the thought of there being a mere 23 characters compared to the last games, but did second Tekken include Gon or Dr. Baskonovich? No it did not, thus nullifying any complaints. The fighting bit, pretty important for a fighting game, was fighty fight fight, or better, too. The ability to get up instantly, the nerfing of jumping as a catch-all avoidance technique, you bouncy bastards, sidesteps for all. T3 Judgment Fist 2 honed and near enough perfected the fist in face action we'd all grown to love like a wasp's nest that's actually filled with bees. Key here though was the fact Tekken 3 introduced the world to the phrase CHICKEN, which had never before been uttered on the planet of Earth. Tekken 3 took the bar, raised it, got annoyed with how it sat at its new height, removed it from the bar holding structure it was sat on, and promptly threw it over a rainbow. Ashamed as I am to use weasel words, I still will, some still rate this third game as the absolute best in the series. They're wrong, but there you go. King Fact a more nimble king in Tekken 3 isn't the result of careful stretching in the 5 to 2 diet. It's because the original king is dead at the hands of Ogre. New king, King 2, whatever you want to call him, is an orphan formerly under old King King 1's care. Vengeance. 1999, Tekken Tag Tournament, Arcade and PlayStation 2. You may notice here that I'm using the Tekken Tag Tournament HD re-release for PS3 in this footage, thanks to the fact that the PAL version of TTT is slow as balls on my PS2 and it emulates like a shit heel on PS3. So that's that. You'll also notice, while I want to talk about how brilliant Tekken Bowl was and is, I cannot, nay will not, include footage of this mode. This is because, and you need to pay close attention here, I forgot to record any, then it was too much hassle to set everything up to go again. 
finally you'll notice that actually I'm not talking about the game much, and that's because really it wasn't hugely notable. I mean, Tutata was and is good, and the tag element added a new depth to play, but really it was just a stepping stone addition to the series, so I'll stop talking about it now, thus making my quest to get a cheap copy of Tekken Hybrid off eBay all the more worthwhile. King fact, if you tagged with Armour King, you could do fancy things like Irish whips into power slams, which means nothing to you if you're not as cool as I am. 2001, Tekken 4, Arcade and PS2. Ah, the forgotten Tekken. The game we all pretend never happened, while whistling a ditty about how actually Makujin is a good character and we're wrong to think Jack in the original game looked like a terrifying grapefruit supported by two toothpicks. Hypocrites. But, well, really, Tekken 4 was a bit pump. It was experimental in many ways, and a lot of its experiments only ever showed up in this entry to the series, like the ability to move before the fight has actually started, stages with uneven floors, or the inability to beat any pro players with complex moves or anything other than jabs. It, yeah, it wasn't the best. Tekken 4, however, did see the addition of Steve Fox, one of the 23 characters on the roster, a boxing Brit who couldn't use kicks. That was fun for a bit, right? I mean, he's no king, obviously, but it was nice to dream of a world where we might care about any other character. Moving swiftly on. King fact. This would see the first time King fought in little more than some wrestling trunks, that's underpants to you and I, as well as an experiment with sporting long hair. It was a tough time for the Lucha Big Cat. 2004, Tekken 5, Arcade and PS2, Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection, PSP and PS3. And thus the king of Iron Fist returned. Tekken 5 did retain some features from its precursor, like some walled-in stages and a less abusable juggling system, but generally speaking it either fixed or outright dropped most of the bad bits from Tekken 4, and by crikey was it all the better for it. T5 was swiftly-ish followed by Dark Resurrection on PSP and PS3, which is notable enough to have its own whole mention here. See, it added new characters, bringing the total to 36, looked better, had more stages, offered more customization options, and allowed you to play as the utter shit heel known as Jim Patchy. Haha, <laughs> that guy. Tekken 5 was a fabulous return to form after the huge misstep in the previous game, and put the series firmly back on… the game map? Is that a thing? King fact. The motion capture for our wrestling Jaguar friend has, at different times, been provided by Japanese mixed martial artist Asami Shibuya and pro wrestling legend Minori Suzuki. This, in case you're confused, is brilliant and cool. 2007. Tekken 6, Arcade, PS3 and Xbox 360. The first time a home version of Tekken appeared officially on a non-Sony console was, as some would argue, the best in the series. Me. I would argue that. Because aside from a massive twatty oversight, which I'll come to, it refined everything about the game to near perfection. With 41 characters to play as, plus two you couldn't play as, there were more playstyles covered than ever before. Not that we'd need to rely on the speed of lore or the power of Dragonov when we still had access to King's 5 throw combo, but there you go, choice is still nice. A rage system, powering you up if close to knockout, made it so those with actual skill about them had a chance of hearing the cry of GREAT as they made an epic comeback, while customization was ramped up, allowing for some truly stupid and brilliant creations, none of which you'll see here because I am a serious and straight-faced individual focused on King. Tekken 6 did feature, however, the new boss fight against Azazel. Azazel is an absolute bellend of the highest order, and the one element of the game that manages to, almost, single-handedly ruin the whole thing. He doesn't, but he bloody well tries. Arsehole. King fact. I reviewed Tekken 6 when it came out on PS3, and my first ever experience with it was trying over and over again to beat the final boss Azazel with King. No real point here, apart from hammering home the fact Azazel was and is one of the worst things to ever have happened. 2011. Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Arcade, PS3, Xbox 360, and Wii U. The second of the taggables turned up a few years ago and brought with it pretty much everything Tekken 6 had, plus the tag bits from the first tag tournament, plus, well, some other stuff, unsurprisingly. I could go on about the wealth of choice with 59 characters on offer in TTT2, but honestly that's just too much. I mean, you could play as a butler, but you've also been able to play as a pet bear in every single Tekken, so it's not really that crazy a situation to be in. And as always, you're not getting footage of what I'm talking about because, say it with me, king in the five throw combo! Anywho, while initially expected to be little more than a distraction for the series, Tag 2 ended up being a fantastic game in its own right, honing the team mechanics and introducing more tag combos, throws and the like, so you could team up and double batter your foe with more destructive grace than ever before, or just pick a team of Eddie and Christy and be what is known as a cheat. This was also the first Tekken game, again officially, on a Nintendo console, with the Wii U version featuring a bunch of exclusive content, costumes and modes and all that. I'm not showing it because I don't have it on Wii U and… wow, that's still 15 quid on eBay, yeah I'll pass. Great game. 
King fact. King was based on the Japanese wrestler Tiger Mask, as well as Mexican luchador Fray Tormenta, who was literally a monk who wrestled in order to pay for the upkeep of the orphanage he ran. Yes, Nacho Libra was based on this bizarrely true story. 2015, Tekken 7, Arcade, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Bringing in 38 characters, a much more manageable number, and introducing new rage arts, or super moves if you want, Tekken 7 was a mix of broad departure from the norm and pure refinement of vintage Tekken features. For example, new bound rules for combos and tailspin effects were introduced, developing the system by which you're getting battered even further than before. Breakable stages were iterated on, item moves made the return, and there was even a change to low ankle kicks, which now saw the person doing the kicking shunted back a small amount after attacking, thus meaning those spamming little twerps who know no other moves were now a disadvantage. But really none of that matters, as while the controls might have been changed a tiny bit, King still had his 5 throw combo. That's every single main Tekken game so far, barring the first game. Yes, it's becoming progressively weaker over the years, but it's the one thing I learned, so it's the one thing I'll stick with forever, and there's nothing you can do about it. But, uh, yeah, Tekken 7. It's reintroducing Tekken Bowl as DLC, and is therefore the greatest Tekken game of all time. Just ignore what I said before about Tekken 6. King fact. DLC went real with Tekken 7. Alongside Bullet Club and other wrestling gear, King can dress as Kazuchika Okada, current golden boy of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and even pull off his finishing move, the Rainmaker. But it doesn't end there. See, Okada actually entered at least one real-life match dressed in the very same outfit. This, friends, is incredible. This is the point in the video where I was going to include all the other games that have featured Tekken characters, but there's loads of them, and honestly, who has the time to download pictures or video of every single one of these things? Safe to say, I know they all exist, and I acknowledge their existence. Isn't that enough for you people? I mean, some of them don't even have King in them, so what's the point? Sounds like a ridiculous waste of time as far as I'm concerned, not putting the guy in his spin-off when he's clearly a pretty cool guy and doesn't afraid of anything. And with that, here's an impression of King. Rah. Please like me, please. I'm likeable, really, I am. I've got most of my own hair, more than one key to my front door. I once owned a hat. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting boastful. I just, I'm trying to convince you to love me. Like me. Oh, and subscribe or whatever it is I'm supposed to say. Bye-bye.